Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm back from uh, spring break. I'm back from my vacation. I'm ready to release the word of God, and I'm also ready to start a new series. So I'm going to be teaching on the life of Joseph, and um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So I want you to put in the chat, I'm ready to receive. Uh, I like to teach by both precept and example. Put in the chat, my heart is open, and I am ready for the word of God. So I see that people are tuning in. Uh, praise God for that. Uh, thank you for allowing me to take that break. That break was good. I needed that, uh, but I'm ready for the word now. See, people are tuning in. So if you're watching on Vimeo Live, call somebody, text somebody, tell them to jump on. Say, hey man, there's this dude that shares the word of God every morning. Let's watch him together. If you're watching on X, just retweet it. If you're watching on YouTube Live, like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified when we go live and share the link. And then if you're watching on Facebook Live on any one of the pages, just hit share. It's going to show up on your page. Or you could tag somebody individually by going into the chat. Put in the at symbol, your friend's name. They'll be tagged and they'll be, they'll be notified. So I'm about to pray and then we need to get started because I have a lot to share with you this morning. So I'm about to pray. Uh, oh, let me do some good mornings here. Good morning, Charlie Mike. Uh, good morning, Dawn. It was good to see you yesterday. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Erica. You know we love you. Uh, good morning, Karen. Hacinda. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Al. Al Morrison. God bless you, sir. Uh, Tamia. Clarice. Miss Clarice. Jay. What's up, Jay? LaShawn. Manny. Buenos dia, mi hermano. Tony Howard. God bless you. Glennis. Jeffrey. God bless you. Ashiki. Uh, all right. So now, Ashiki, you're on spring break. I just got back from, from spring break. Monique, God bless you. Good morning. Uh, Monique, we got to do one of these spring breaks back in St. Thomas. We got to make that happen. Teresa, Shakita, Thelma, Yolanda, good morning, good morning, good morning. Robert, Yvette, Tony, Didi, good morning you and uh, Earl, Clarice, uh, Wanda, Nikita. All right. I see a lot of people on. So I love you guys. I thank God for you. I appreciate you. My wife is on. Hey, babe. Love you. Craig, 1000. God bless you, my brother. Rhonda, all right, so we're about to get started. If you haven't shared the, uh, the link, please do so. James Parks, Bob Graham, CC. good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's pray so we can get into this word because I have a lot to share with you this morning. Father, we thank you for this day. This is a Monday morning. It's April 1st. As we close out the first three months of the year, the first quarter of the year is gone now, and uh, we established a foundation in this series, and now we're ready to, to transition into the next phase of what you told me to teach for 2024. I give myself over to you. I lift up your word. I declare that your word will go forth unhindered and unchecked by any satanic or demonic force that's going to accomplish those things that, sent, that you send it out to do, and it will prosper in every heart in which you sow it. And so, Father, you watch over your word to perform it in our lives. I thank you, Father, for helping me to communicate your word uh, in a way that people can see it, hear it, understand it, and apply it. And I lift up every person that's watching now live and those who will watch later. I pray that their faith will be strengthened that they would be fortified in their spirit, that they, would, uh, that they would develop a spiritual backbone to where they would not give up, not cave in, not quit, that they would have a warrior spirit, that they would be fixed and focused on the path that you have, have established for them, and that they would not be distracted, neither to the left nor to the right. No distractions. We have laser focus. We have faith and patience. And I pray, Father, that we will see the manifestation of your, your promises in your timing for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, it's all about you. So, uh, yeah, I, I'll talk about that here in a minute. Once I get started, that we're transitioning in this series now. So if you haven't shared the message, <clears throat> please do so. And here we go. All right. Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for April 1st, 2024. So what I did for the first three months of the year, I like to teach by both precept and example. And the Lord told me that this year we would be dealing with not only just a fixed purpose, really teaching people that God has a purpose for us. And this, pur this purpose was fixed and established before the world began. And not only does God have a purpose for our entire lives, he also has a purpose for each season. So we live our lives out in times and seasons, levels and stages. So I spent the first three months of the year laying the foundation, giving you scripture after scripture after scripture, 
where, and if you haven't seen that, you can go back. You could just, wherever you get your podcast, just search for the Rick Pina podcast or go to youtube.com forward slash Rick Pina. So I've been laying the foundation that this is a year of fixed purpose and that we must have a laser focus on that fixed purpose. Since I like to teach by both precept and example, I think that a lot of times believers can really get a better understanding of what principles and precepts uh, you know, are from the Bible when you give examples. And so now we're transitioning for the rest of the year. We're going to study the lives of some biblical characters that actually lived with a laser focus on their fixed purpose. And the first one we're going to study is Joseph. So today, and I love these guys that we're going to study, but the first one is Joseph. So today, I'm going to give you an introduction to the life of Joseph. This is going to be a study on favor and focus. Put in the chat, say, I have both favor and focus. The favor of God is on my life, and I have a focus. I have a laser focus on the fixed purpose that God has for me, and I will not be swayed. I will not be moved neither to the left nor to the right. Say favor and focus. Let's get ready for the word. So let's get into the word favor and focus. Now, the foundational scripture for this year is Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 25. I'm going to be sharing this with you every day. This is what the Bible says. Set your gaze on the path before you. We're not going to, we're not going to walk away from Proverbs 4 and 25. Put in the chat, I set my gaze. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Put in the chat, I ignore every distraction. I'm not going to be distracted, neither to the left nor to the right. I'm not going to be swayed or distracted or derailed from my destiny. Say a, amen to that. So now I want to add some additional scriptures, and then we're going to be looking at the life of Joseph. So we're going to have to look at Genesis, all types of things in, in Genesis as well. But I'm also going to give you some scriptures for this phase of the series uh, that, that I'm going to be, you know, kind of sharing with you. So here you have uh, a couple of things that I want to share with you from a foundational uh, perspective. The first one is James 1 and 24. So James 1, uh, uh, actually uh, 2 through 4 from the Passion Translation says this, My fellow believers, when it seems as though you are facing nothing but difficulties, now I don't know who I'm talking to, but you may, you may be facing difficulties. When it seems as though you're facing nothing but difficulties, See it as an invaluable opportunity to experience the greatest joy that you can. See it as an opportunity to experience the joy of the Lord in the middle of difficulties. Verse 3 says, For you know that when your faith is tested, it stirs up the power within you, which is the grace of God, the Holy Spirit, to endure all things. Put this in the chat. I can endure all things. Verse 4 says, And then, as your endurance grows even stronger, it will release perfection into every part of your being until there is nothing missing and nothing lacking. So he's saying that by going through tests and trials, you can develop maturity. You can, you can be processed to be able to, the, to get to the point where you lack nothing. Put in the chat, say, I lack nothing. I have nothing missing, nothing lacking, nothing broken in my life. I'm, de I'm developed. I'm not going to allow circumstances or situations that are external to me to dictate what's going on internal to me. Say amen to that. Galatians 6 and 9 says, let us not become weary in doing what is right. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Put in the chat, say, I, I will not give up. All right. So now the, the, I'm just setting the stage. Let me set the stage for the life of Joseph. In the life of Joseph, we see a great example of the necessity for divine focus and enduring faith. Joseph went on a journey from a dream to his destiny, to the manifestation of the dream. And his journey was not immediate and it was not straightforward, right? It didn't happen overnight. 
and it wasn't easy. It didn't. It, it looked like it was a zigzag. It was. It was a journey that was riddled with betrayal and injustice and trials and temptations and all of that and challenges after challenge after challenge. But in the life of Joseph, he was underpinned by the dream that he had and and this this commitment to the dream and he know that he knew that God was committed to bringing it to pass. So despite years of hardship, and I said years now, of hardships, then in this series, as we study the life of Joseph, we're going to see that God was faithful. God never said that we're not going to go through anything, but God was faithful and he was faithful over the long haul. Every level, every stage of his life, God was there, even though a lot of it was very difficult, but ultimately the dream came to pass. So let me share a couple of things with you as I'm still setting the stage for the life of Joseph. Let me first of all talk about the necessity of vision. Say vision. Put in the chat, say, I have a vision from God. You, you have to understand the vision that God has for you. There's a vision that God, a glimpse. These are things that God deposits down in your spirit. God can give you dreams while you're sleeping, open visions while you're awake. He can speak to you while you're praying. He can speak to you through the Holy Spirit. He can speak to you through other people. But God will give you a vision of the future that he ordained, which is what he did with Joseph. Now, as we get a vision from God, now we have to navigate life and we have to navigate our now believing that the vision is our next. And so how do I deal with my today knowing that God has called me to do something greater in my tomorrow? So my vision is my North Star and is guiding me through uncertainties and challenges and tests and trials. So the, the challenges are going to come. Joseph had to endure. Put in the chat, say, I endure. You have to endure. You have to overcome. You have to know that God is going to bring to pass his perfect will in your life, but it's not going to happen overnight. So that's why Hebrews 6 and 12 says that you got to have faith and patience. Put in the chat, say, I have faith and patience. You must be committed to God like God is committed to you. Joseph faced betrayal, slavery, false accusations, and imprisonment. And in every stage of his life, he, at the end, looking back, he was like, those were not detours. Those were all critical parts of his development, ultimately to get him prepared for the assignment that God has for us. So you got to see your challenges, your struggles, not as delays or deni denials, but you got to see this as a time of preparation for what is to come. You got to know that God is processing you. Put in the chat, say, God is processing me for my purpose. And you got to remain focused. You cannot be distracted. Say this, I will not be distracted. Joseph's life was filled with distractions. He was betrayed by his brothers. Potiphar's wife lied on him, right? Uh, he wound up in a pit. He wound up as a slave. He wound up in prison. But the whole time, he kept the dream alive in his heart. And he knew that God would bring the dream to pass at just the right time. So you got to believe that ultimately God's timing is perfect. Ultimately, God cannot lie. So God is going to bring the dream to pass. Put in the chat, say God cannot lie. So you got to believe that God has given you a dream. That dream is going to come to pass. He can't lie. So while you're going through it, his timing is perfect. And even though his timing may not be your timing, you got to hold on until you see the manifestation of God's promises. You got it? All of that was just setting the stage. <laughs> so what does this mean for you today? I only have a couple of things uh, that I'm going to share with you this morning because I'm still kind of laying the foundation. This is an introduction into the life of Joseph. And we're going to be studying the life of Joseph for months. So I, I'm not going to rush through this thing, right? So we, we're going to look at lots of things from the life of Joseph. Here's number one. Uh, I only have two things, I think, this morning. Number one, you must be processed for your purpose. Put in the chat, say, I must be processed. I've told you like a gazillion times that you must be processed to be able to carry the weight of the anointing associated with the assignment. So you and I, all of us, we're called to do whatever we're called to do. And we're all called to do different things in life. But when we get a revelation from God, meaning literally that God has revealed to us what he planned for us from the foundations of the world, oftentimes we get excited. And it's understandable, right? God gives you a glimpse of you running that business or God gives you a glimpse of you going to that school. That's the school you always wanted to go to. Or God gives you a glimpse of you, you know, getting that promotion. The promotion like, oh my God, that's three levels above me. How could that happen? And God shows it to you. 
And, and when God does, God can't lie. So he's not showing it to you then to say, psych, you know, I renege, I take it back. No, I mean, it's going to come to pass. Now, what we don't know is how long it's going to take. So when God reveals it to us, the thing is we get excited, but we have no idea what is going to be required of us in the process. We have no idea how much processing we must endure in order to get ready to operate on that level. And so Joseph got a dream when he was just a teenager, and he had no idea how much processing he was going to have to endure in order for that dream to come to pass. But he opened his heart to the dream. He believed the dream. He, he didn't have any idea how long it was going to take between the promise and the performance, but he ultimately he was like, okay, this is what God said. God gave me this dream. We're going to study this thing, and you were going to see that it took over 20 years for the dream, over 20 years for the dream to come to pass. And 13 of those 20 years were full of pain, were full of processing. And I'm talking about God gave you a dream, but you don't know what God, what's going to happen between now and then. So while I'm teaching you on fixed purpose, I also want to be clear that, look at me, for you to become the man or the woman that God has called you to be, you must be willing to endure whatever you have to endure on the path to your purpose. This is why you need faith and patience and commitment and joy. The greater the assignment, the greater the attack, and the longer the processing. Let me slow down. Let me say that again. Put that in the chat. Listen, let me be clear about this. The greater the assignment, the greater the attack, and the longer the processing. If you're called to do something great, listen, the attack is going to be against the assignment. The devil is not going to just sit back and watch you become the man or the woman that God called you to be and leave a mark in this world that will not easily be erased. No, the greater the assignment, the greater the attack, and the longer the processing. All right, so I'm going to give you a personal story, personal testimony about this. I've shared this before, but um, many of you have not heard it. So let me just you know give you this story. Back in 2000, the year 2000, I was a young preacher, and I was at a church. Actually, some people that are watching right now, Dr. Genia Anglin is still a member of this church, Marlboro Heights Missionary Baptist Church, and some others are watching from Marlboro. So I was a young preacher in the year 2000. And uh, Marlboro Heights Missionary Baptist Church had not moved to the sanctuary where they are right now, to the, to the, to the property where they are right now. They were still at the older uh, property. And on that older property, there was the main sanctuary and the old sanctuary. The old sanctuary was like a smaller sanctuary. I was a preacher. I had been preaching for years. I had already pastored by this point. By the year 2000, I had already you know, served as a pastor uh, I knew that God had called me to pastor, that I was going to be preaching and teaching the word of God for the rest of my life. And at Marlboro Heights Missionary Baptist Church, we had three services back then, 8 a.m., 11 a.m., and 7, uh, 7 p.m. And I went to all three. Uh, Is Isabella didn't have to go through all three, but I went to all three. A anyway, one Sunday morning, it was 7 a.m. I was in the small sanctuary before the 8 a.m. service. I would show up like an hour, sometimes an hour before service. So I would go to all three services, but I showed up at 7 a.m. to pray. So I was I was there in the small sanctuary, 7 a.m. by myself. And um, some of my other brothers would show up with me, but that particular morning, nobody was there. So it was just me praying. And I was praying, and I was supposed to be praying for the, the day, the service and all that. But that day, I, I chose to pray for me. And so I was in, I was there, and I was having a conversation with God. And I was kind of upset with God. And, um, and I was like, Lord, you know, I was, I, you know, as a young person, you want things to happen really fast. And so I was like, Lord, I know that I'm called to preach and I know that I'm called to pastor and I see other people getting more opportunities to go out and preach, you know, all over the, the, the area in, in Texas or around the country. And I was like, Lord, why are these things not happening for me? Like, you know, like most young people, I just wanted things to happen fast. And so I'm like, Lord, you know, I know I could preach, you know, that kind of thing. Obviously, I was I needed some humility, but I'm saying this is a conversation I'm having with the Lord. And so the Lord says, okay, the Lord takes me to Moses. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. So, you know, the Lord tells me, open up your Bible. We go to the book of Exodus and I'm reading about Moses. And so Moses was destined. So the Lord starts to have a conversation with me about Moses and how the, you know, the greater the assignment, the greater the attack. And I was like, okay. And so he shows me that since Moses was destined to do something amazing, there was an attack against him um, even before he was born. So these sorcerers told the Pharaoh 
that somebody was going to be, you know, somebody would raise up within the, the, the Jewish people that were prisoners at the time, the Israelites, that they were slaves, that somebody from them, went, there was a male child that was going to rise up and basically destroy Egypt. So there was an assignment, a death certificate was signed to kill all of the male children. So this was a death. So Moses was born with a death sentence. Same thing happened uh, to Jesus. Jesus was born with a death sentence, right? And so that that you know Herod wanted to kill Jesus. So the greater the assignment, the greater the attack. I'm like, Lord, okay, Lord, I got it. So he says, okay, now he says, son, I'm called you to do some things that are that are significant. So there's going to be some significant attacks against you. I want you to understand that. And I was like, okay. Then the Lord said, okay, now let's look at Moses. And I'm like, okay, walk me through it. So he says, okay, you see how Moses was born with this death sentence, what did his mother do? And I'm looking, his, his mother hid him, okay? And so she hid him so that he wouldn't be killed. And so the Lord says, okay, what did she do while she was hiding him? I was like, I don't know, because the Bible doesn't say this, but he was like, obviously, she fed him. You know, I mean, so she fed him while she was hiding him. And, and the Bible, this is not, to be clear, this, what I'm telling you right now is not in the Bible. This is the conversation I was having with God. So he said, so she had, she hit him. Now the hidden, the hiding part is in the Bible. She hit him, right? He said, what did she do while she was at him? I don't know. Well, she fed him. It was like, okay, okay, that makes sense. So she hid him and she fed him. And then what happened when she was feeding him? I was like, I don't know. The Lord was like, he was growing. I was like, oh, okay. So she hid him. She fed him and he was growing. I said, yes. Three times the Lord said, she hid him. She fed him. And he was growing. I said, yes. The third time she hid him, she fed him and he was growing. I said, yes. And then the Lord said, now look down. I looked down at my Bible and it says, when he could no longer be hid, she released him into the water. And so there came a point where he got too big and he could no longer be hid. And when he could no longer be hid, she released him into the water. I said, okay. And then the Lord said, okay, so listen, I'm, I'm hiding you. I'm feeding you and you're growing. And there will come a day when you can no longer be hid. And when that day comes, I will release you. I have great things for you. I'm going to do great things in your life. I've showed you some of these things and many things I haven't revealed it to you. Because back in the, in the year 2000, the Lord hadn't shown me a lot of things because I wasn't even ready for it. That's another revelation that God can't reveal to you what you're not ready to receive. So anyway, so I said, okay, Lord, well, that was 24 years ago. And, and 24 years later, in many ways, I'm still waiting. The Lord hasn't released me yet. And so, so the Lord is still kind of hiding me and feeding me and I'm growing. And But there will come a day when I can no longer be hid. And there will come a day where the Lord releases me. I don't know who that was for, but the Lord said, tell your story this morning. This is for somebody. Listen, you got to understand that there's a level of processing. That's what God did with Joseph. That's what God has done with me. That, and that's what God will do with you is that there's a level of processing. There's the, the, the calling and then the, there's a time of preparation and the Lord can't release you until you're ready for it. And the Lord can't even speak speak to you about some things until you're ready to hear it, until you're ready to receive it. There are things that you are not even ready to hear, much less do. And so, so this, this journey with God will require faith and patience and focus. You got to learn how to rest in what God is doing today, knowing that God has great plans for you for your tomorrow. And there are some things that God hasn't even told you yet because you're not ready to, to receive it yet. You're not even ready to, to believe it yet. The day came for Moses. He was released. The day came for Joseph. He was promoted from prisoner to prime minister. And one day, the day will come for me and the day will come for you. But we have to have faith and patience. Say amen to that. All right. Ooh, glory to God, man. I feel like preaching now. All right, number two. That's some good stuff. All right, number two, the paternal phase. I'm only giving you two things today. And then, I'm, and then we're going to study the life of Joseph. When Joseph was at home with, with his father and with his brothers, this is what I call the paternal phase, before the pit phase, before the Potiphar phase, before the prison phase, before the palace phase, the paternal phase. So Joseph was at home and he had great favor with his father. Why did he have favor? Let me explain. Joseph's father, Jacob, fell in love with a woman named Rachel. He was like, ooh, that girl is fine. J Jacob loved Rachel. Rachel so much that he worked seven years to marry her. And then Laban, his father-in-law, on his wedding night, on the honeymoon, Jacob was, was, was tricked. His father-in-law switched out the girls. And um, instead of having Rachel to sleep with that night, he wound up sleeping with Leah. 
right? And so he switched, the father switched daughters. <laughs> Somebody said he gave him the ugly one. Now, I, 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 that's not in the Bible. I should not have said that. Isabella's going to be mad at me for saying that. But anyway, I, let me just slide that in. That's not the one he wanted. And so, so he gets up the next morning. He was like, what is this? And he's like, well, you know, you, you don't slept with her now. So that's your wife. And then, but he's like, but I want Rachel. He so said, now you got to work seven more years for Rachel. So anyway, he worked seven more years for Rachel. And so anyway, so Rachel is now there. Leah is there. Leah gave birth to Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah. But Rachel, the woman that he loved, she was still barren. She had no babies. So Rachel goes to Jacob one day and says, hey, um, I want you to sleep with my servant Bilhah and have babies with Bilhah. So Bilhah gave him Dan and Naphtali, but Rachel was still barren. So then Leah uh, said, okay, well, why don't you sleep with my servant? And uh, he slept with his servant, that servant, and, and her name was Zilpah. And Zilpah gave him Gad and Asher, but Rachel was still barren. After that, Leah became fertile again and gave birth to Issachar and Zebulun and Dina. And Rachel was still barren. Oh, my God. So after all of this time, after all of this time, the Bible says, come on now. The Bible says God remembered Rachel. The, a, a season of favor came over Rachel. God remembered Rachel and listened to her and opened her womb. Let me say this. There's some of you, I, I preached this one time years ago, and the Lord, I, the Lord had me to prophesy that God was opening somebody's womb, and the lady now is a member of our church, and her daughter is at our church right now. She came in and gave me the testimony. But anyway, the Lord said, okay, now I, in this season of favor, I'm going to open your womb. And finally, she conceived and she bore a, a son. And, and, and she said, God has taken away my reproach. And she called that boy Joseph, right? And in that season of favor, when Joseph was being born, watch this, in the season of favor, she opened up her mouth and she said, the Lord shall add to me another son. So she, she prophesied in the season of favor and God gave her Benjamin. So she gave birth to Joseph and she gave birth to Benjamin. Right, And so all of this happened after all the other 10 boys were, were there. So just a quick uh, uh, nugget. Let me slide in. In the season of favor, you need to open up your mouth and declare some things. So going back to Joseph so I can close this out for today. Now you can see why Joseph was favored. He was the first son born of the woman that Jacob really loved. So Jacob gave him a coat of many colors and, and, and he was, matter of fact, the father loved him above the other brothers. And Joseph flaunted that favor. And the brothers hated him because of the favor, and they hated him because of the coat. Let me give you some quick nuggets so I can close out this message for today. These are like rapid fire. Here's the first one. There will be people who despise you because of the favor of God on your life. But the good news is that their poison cannot stop your purpose. Put in the chat, their poison cannot stop my purpose. Number two, not everyone who is with you is for you. I learned that at Marlboro Heights Missionary Baptist Church. Not everyone who is with you is for you. And that's a lesson that we all need to learn. Sometimes we're so nice that we think that everybody that's with us is for us, and that's not true. Number three, favor is not earned. Favor is given. Favor was given to Joseph and the favor was given to, to Rachel. And so favor is given. We, ha we have to open up our heart to the favor of God. Put in the chat, the F-O-G is all over me. Number four, favor should be appreciated but not flaunted. Let me slow down on this point. Joseph flaunted the favor and his brothers hated him for it. Listen, the favor of God should be appreciated, but you shouldn't flaunt the favor of God. You stay humble. Appreciate the fact that God is blessing you, that God is doing things for you that you could not do for yourself, but don't flaunt it as if you did something to earn it or to deserve it. Matter of fact, you should remain humble and give God the glory for it. Favor should be appreciated, but not flaunted. Number five, when you walk in God's favor, people will get frustrated because you receive for free what they've been working hard to earn. When the favor of God is on your life, you receive for free what they are working hard to earn, and you just get it because the favor of God is on your life. So people are going to get frustrated. That's why you got to remain humble. And lastly, uh, a couple of points here. Learn how to, to walk in favor. Remain humble in your prosperity. Thank God for the favor of God on your life, but, but continue to give him the glory. Make sure that it's about him and not about you. And the last thing I'll say this. Joseph had to be kicked out of his home 
his brothers actually did him a favor because greatness is never developed in comfort. So while Joseph was at home, he had the favor of his father and he was comfortable. And let me say something. Greatness is never developed in comfort. I'm speaking to somebody today. If you get too comfortable, the Lord is going to shift you. If you get too comfortable, the Lord is going to have to push you out sometimes. Sometimes you have to get kicked out because you don't want to walk out yourself. And so sometimes you have to be pushed into your purpose. You have to be projected into your destiny because greatness is never developed in comfort. That's enough for today. Let's close. I said a lot. Today's message, you might need to listen to this again. I'm just laying the foundation. We're going to study the life of Joseph for the months to come. It's going to be amazing. Let's close out with a declaration of faith. Say this. Say, Father, I declare that I will walk in purpose, your purpose for me, with unwavering focus and undeniable faith. Your favor is upon my life, and so I carry it with humility. I acknowledge the process of waiting and trusting while you are preparing me for my divine assignment. I believe that every challenge I face is actually developing me, developing faith and patience and character. Father, I understand that not everyone who's with me is for me. Some people will despise the calling on my life, but I'm going to keep my eyes fixed and focused on you. I accept my journey. I navigate through times of discomfort, and I'm confident that you will bring it to pass in your perfect timing. Greater is coming for me because I'm walking out my, div my divine assignment and I will never give up. I declare this by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, this is today's word. Tomorrow, I'm going to have another one. So please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages and you want my notes, why would you not sign up to get my notes? You get the notes for free. Go to todaysword.org, click on the big red subscribe button on the top right, put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. Listen, I love you. God loves you more. Do me a favor. Two things. Leave me some comments in the chat if this message was a blessing to you. Number two, share this message right now, right now, right now on your social media, on your timeline, and with your friends. I love you. Have an amazing day. Greater is coming for you. God bless you. If our ministry is a blessing to you, please consider becoming a partner with Rick and Isabella Pena Ministries. Not only will you support the Word of God going out on a daily basis, but you will also support our school in the Dominican Republic, where we are providing 200 Haitian children a Christ-based education free of charge and also a hot meal every day. If you want to become a partner with us, go to ripministries.org and you'll be able to do so there. If you don't have any of my materials, well, let me just show you a few things. Well, this is my first book, Level Up Your Life, where I cover how to level up your life in five areas of your life. Here's Grace-Based Success. It's a daily devotional where in 28 days, you'll be able to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then here's two affirmations books, one for men and one for women. These books will help you to align your faith, your heart, and your lips with the word of God. Or just go to rickpina.co. You'll see all the books there, apparel. Please make yourself available to those materials. They will be a blessing to you. Lastly, Isabella and I have been committed to coaching and mentorship for many, many years. And the Lord led me to use a platform where I could do it online, where we can leverage ourselves and scale. So now we have over 600 videos and continuing to grow. We're recording videos on a weekly basis where we're covering how to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and how to be successful as a Christian and in business and with relationships and etc. So if you're interested in that, please go to patreon.com forward slash Rick Pina. You will be blessed. Thank you for being a blessing to us. And we pray that we will continue to be a blessing.